that would be helpful to me in observing it bud. But I would, I'd, uh, if I were y'all, I'd stay back in the hallway right. there, back next to my little room, mm -hmm. so that they got room. And I'd clear the chairs around, and I believe that a hundred or so can get in there, and that's all that they need. And that's twice of what they'll have. I think our general demeanor, I'd like to have you all thinking on it. But I think I ought to try to make my replies uh, uh, brisk and, and, and brief and not try to explain anything to them. Just try to say yes and no as much as I can and uh, have a little humor in it. Right. And uh, I do think we ought to have every question answered, and we, we, ought, to, uh, we ought to circulate a little more, uh, you and Jack and uh, George, out among them to get their feel on what they're saying. Uh, you might find out what Scotty Reston's got on his mind. Did he see you yesterday? No, sir. He was in for an hour or so seeing Bundy. And you might drift in there and say, well, what's Scotty thinking these days, or find out. I think I ought to try to see Lippman today. That's a good idea. Because I, I've never had any of this church stuff at all. And I'd like to get, Jack will get the letters that I wrote church, and he wrote me. I've forgotten who drafted it. Did you draft it to church? No, sir. Somebody did. It's good letters, I remembered it. Uh, he wrote me a nice letter, and I wrote him one, which kind of proves that there's no truth to this stuff. But I think that Lippman may be a little sensitive uh, to it. Now, did you read him in Newsweek this week? No. He has a, a fairly negative column saying that the, the president really uh, does not believe in debate, apparently, because he doesn't believe that the American people of the Congress ought to debate Vietnam. And he said this is where he differs with the president. Well, he doesn't understand that I'm debating it every night. That's I'm right. Two a week. Uh, That's right. With all of them, and I've never objected to anybody debating them. If you call him in, Mr. President, I think, uh, for example, this one of the I have a transcript of one of the sessions when you were very good. When you say a lot of the things that I know he believes, you might show him that. Uh, one of those briefings over there. Just let him read it off the record, not the publication. Uh, and just show him what's going on. Uh, all right. I have one question. Has anyone talked to you about the? Uh, consideration being given on the Hill, uh, not to making the Social Security benefits retroactive. There's a movement afoot uh, among some to uh, uh, to drop the retro retroactivity part of the Social Security benefits. And uh, Gardner, Ackett, Kirby Gordon, and others feel that, that this would have a serious effect on, on uh, the uh, economic situation toward the end of the year. And we need to make a determined fight to, to keep that retroactive clause back to January 1 in the bill on, uh, on Medicare and Social Security. Uh, my, uh, uh, my judgment is uh, that uh, it ought to be retroactive. I have not analyzed the pros or the cons. My reason, though, is not because of the economy. I think we use the economy too much to spend money. I think that... Uh, uh, I think that we, we are just tired of these old cliches that uh, we, we just got to do it. Now, we don't do it uh, if it's agricultural payments at all. That's never justified. And you and Kermit and Gardner never have recommended we dump a million, billion extra for cotton farmers mm -hmm. or a billion extra for uh, wage an hour increases over the United States. But you, uh, you do uh, on uh, withholdings and you do on this. So I don't think that that would be my basis. I believe we come to the same agreement, so it's unimportant. Uh, and I would be glad to hear somebody 10 minutes on each side. But uh, my uh, reason would be the same as I agreed to go $400 million on health. Uh, I've never seen an antitrust suit lie against an old-age pensioner for a monopoly or concentration of power are closely held wealth. <laughs> I've never seen it to apply to uh, uh, um, the, uh, the average worker. And uh, I've never seen the one have too much health benefits. Mm -hmm. And when they come in to me and say, we've got to have 400 million more so we can take care of some doctor's bills, I'm far it on health. I'm pretty much far it on education. I'm, all, I'm far it anywhere it's practical. 
And I mean by that, you see the problem that the, yes. uh, about your poverty boys now, they're, yes. they're dragging their heels and they don't want to go testify because they haven't got the money spent. I told them that last year, but oh no, they already had more of it and they'd be going at such a rate. You remember the screams? I do. Now, if I had them, it would make them look like uh, children now. But I anticipated this and I tried to get them to be moderate and I went and gave them three or four hundred million at lunch. But uh, now they are holding back and won't go get the authorization because they haven't got the money spent. They're going to wind up by wind up with a continuing resolution, not getting the hearings, and they at least ought to go to the uh, to the uh, Senate where they get friendliness or someplace and, and start putting in the basic stuff and dodge this issue and then estimate that the, how much your allocation is going to be. They ought to be starting that thing and getting it along because if they don't, they get caught in this thing. They, they're not going to do anything during March. And then Easter's going to come and everybody's going home Easter. Then they're going to come back and May is going to be graduation month. And we're not going to get anything through. But anyway, uh, that's the only reason I hold down on poverty because I didn't think it's practical to make it look bad and I'd be for two billion four instead of one billion four if you had it out and if you had a good construction man running it and if you had a hard-nosed administrator that had a real reputation uh, of Moses or somebody that you ickies that you just knew uh, couldn't be touched. I'd be for all you could shovel out at the bottom. Therefore, summarizing, my inclination would be and the weight of my judgment at this moment would be that it ought to be retroactive as far back as you could get it, and I would guess January, uh, because none of them ever get enough, and uh, that they are entitled to, to it, and uh, that that's an obligation of ours, and it's, uh, it's just like your mother writing in and saying that she wants $20, and I'd always send mine 100 when she did. I never did it because I thought it was going to be good for the economy of Austin. I always did it because I thought she was entitled to it. And I think that's a much better reason and a much better cause. And I think it can be defended on a hell of a lot better basis. I don't think that you ought to justify shoveling money out. Just I think it, we do know that it affects the economy. And I think that we, we, we do think that it balanced and that it, it helps us in that respect. That's not the basis to go to the hill or the justification. We just got to say that, by God, you can't treat Grandma this way. She's entitled to it, and we promised it to her. We held it up last year, and we're committed, and we're obligated. And get Russell along on the phone and let him give out some interviews. And uh, wish I'd recorded that. I'll go and tell, pass this on to Celebrity. He's got to testify on the retroactive element. Uh, fact, uh, no, I got to hear 10 minutes of it on each side. I'm just playing them off my head right. now. But that's my information and that's part of the guidance. Okay, anything else? No, sir.